Hello and welcome. In this video, we will create a simple C Sharp UVP Media Player application. This app can upload an MP4 file and play the according video. By using these different playback buttons, you can start, pause, and resume the video. You can also use this slider bar to go to a specific time. Also, notice that this video is part of a bigger video series where we create this app that can play three media players in sync on different screens. Interested in this project? Subscribe to my channel and check out the first project overview video in the link below. Let's get started. To develop our UAP Media Player application, we'll be using Visual Studio. So, let's create a new project. Search for UAP, select Universal Windows, Blank Application, Britain and C Sharp. Next, give our project a name, like UAP Media Player. Select a nice location. Click Create, OK, and our project has been created. On the right side, we see all our files and folders of our project. The most important files we'll be using are our mainpage.saml file, that's representing our UI, and our mainpage.saml.cs file, to program some functionalities in C Sharp for our XAML page. First, we'll start developing our UI by looking at my already finished application, that looks like this. As you can see, we have to add buttons, a slider bar, and so on. We'll start by adding a media player element. So let's check toolbox. And here you see a media element. The problem with this media element is that it is a bit outdated. Microsoft is asking us to use a newer media player element that has more advanced media playback scenarios. I'll copy the media player element code from my already finished application and paste it in our XAML code. You can also copy the code from this web page. As you can see, our media player element is located on our XAML page. Beneath, we'll add a slider bar. So, select Toolbox, look for Slider, select, paste, and change the length of the bar. We also add two text boxes, one for the time progression of our video, and one for the max duration of our uploaded media file. At last, we'll add the buttons for our media playback functionalities. We'll also do some styling on them by changing the properties in our XAML code, like background color, font size, border brush, border thickness, height, and width. We also change the background color of our grid and make sure that the text boxes don't have any borders. To be able to play a media file on this media player element, we have to create a media player object from the media player class that can hold the source of the used media file. On this Microsoft documentation page, you can find all the information needed to use this media player class, like which methods, properties, events that can be used. To make things more clear in the rest of the video, I will always try to show where the used classes, methods, etc. come from and how we can use them. In our XAML.cs file, let's start with creating a private media player field called media player. This field will hold a reference to our newly created media player object. So our new object is accessible to all methods in the main page class. In the main page constructor, we create a new instance of the media player class. So when our main page is loaded, our object is created and its reference gets stored in this private media player field. The media player element in our XAML page has to use our newly created object, because this object will hold the source of the played media file. We can do this by using the set media player method of the media player element. To set the source of the media player to a specific media player path, the path gets stored in the media player.source property. We won't use a hard coded media file path, like this for example. Instead, we'll create a media picker method where users can pick a media file from their file system. So let's create a method media picker. We choose void because there will be no return value. We create a new instance of the file open picker class and assign its reference to the variable media picker. Let's have a look at the documentation to see which properties and methods we'll use. This object will help us choose our desired media file. When the file open picker looks in our file system, we want it to just display the .mp4 files. So let's use the file type filter property and add .mp4. You can add more than one file extension, like .wow or .mov and so on. They will all be saved in this list of strings of our property. 
we'll also use the suggested stored location property to let our file open picker look in the right location for media files. After setting our properties, the pick single file async method lets us choose our media file from our file system. This is an async method, so let's add an await statement. This means we also have to make our media picker method an async method. This method returns a storage file, so we assign its return value to a new variable. With the help of the create from storage file method of the media source class, we create our needed media source instance and assign it to our media player.source property. Now we add our newly created media picker method to our load button click event. So when we press this button, we can upload an MP4 file. When we close this, you see that there will be an exception. So we'll add a try catch block. So when we close our window, the exception will be catched by the catch statement. Now we added the desired functionality to our load video button. Time for the other four buttons. When we click on the play button, the video must start. So we use the media player.play method. We'll also add this to the resume button. To the pause button, we add the media player.stop method. To close our application, we'll use core application.exit. The play and resume button have the same functionalities. So when we press play, we also want to start at the beginning of a video. So we set the playback session dot position to zero. We don't always want to have access to the buttons. So we'll disable the play, pause, and resume button in the main page constructor. When our video has been uploaded, we enable the play button. When our video has started, we enable the pause button. Pressing the pause button disables the pause and reverse. So just make these adjustments so it all makes sense. So if we check this, the media player just works fine. The last and biggest part of this video will be adding functionality to the slider bar. So we can use this bar to go to specific times in our media file. The first thing we'll do is changing the value of the slider bar when the video is playing. Let's create a dispatcher object that will play as our timer and stores its reference in a private field. We change the interval and tick frequency properties of our object and the slider. So every tick of our timer equals one second. Every time the dispatcher timer ticks, our slider.value property must go up one in value. So when playing the video, our dispatcher object starts ticking, what makes the value of the slider bar goes up. On the documentation page of the dispatcher timer class, we look for the event called tick. The definition states that each time the interval has elapsed, in our case one second, the event occurs. So in a sense, we want to create a method that will be activated each time the dispatcher timer ticks. Here's a quick overview of how this event system works. Our dispatcher timer .tick event on the left can be seen as our publisher, or event sender. On the right side, you can see your subscriber or event receiver called dispatcher timer tick event handler. So our subscriber method will be activated when our publisher event occurs. The event handler method has two parameters. These can be chosen randomly. To know which to use, we have to check the signature of the according delegate that binds the publisher and subscriber. We can check this signature by going to our documentation page and look at the event type. The first parameter is an object that contains data from the source of the event. The second one is also an object that contains the event data. So let's create a dispatcher timer .tick event, or publisher, and add our event handler called dispatcher timer tick event handler or subscriber. In creating our event handler method, we use object sender and object e as our parameters. And inside our method, we increase the value of the slider bar with one, as discussed before. Starting our video by pressing the play button starts our dispatcher timer. As you can see, our slider bar is moving. Also, when pressing the pause button and load video button, our dispatcher timer has to stop. We also add our dispatcher timer.start method to our resume button. There is still one problem with the slider bar. The maximum value of our slider bar is not defined. So we have to set the max value of the slider bar to the max duration of our uploaded media file. Each time a video has been uploaded, our max duration changes. So in our try block, in our media picker method, we create a playback session natural duration changed event that will occur when we upload a new video 
and activates this added natural duration changed event handler. Like before, when creating the event handler, we check which parameters are needed on the documentation page. To save the duration of our media file, we create a new time span field called duration mf. In our event handler, we get a duration from the sender object and save it in this newly created field. Finally, when clicking on play, we set the max value of our slider bar to the total seconds of our video. When trying to manipulate the slider, nothing happens and the video just keeps playing. We want to add a new functionality, so when the user manipulates this bar, the media player goes to the right playback position. To do this, we have to add an event, an event that occurs when the value of the slider bar changes. Let's use the event value changed on the documentation page of the slider class. We add our event handler to this value changed event in our example code. To create our event handler method, we check which parameters are needed on the documentation page. This E parameter holds the data about the change in range value. So we extract the new slider position and use this value to set our media player on the right playback position. When moving the slider, our media player's playback position also changes. But we still have one problem. This video is a bit laggy because now our media player playback position also gets updated when our video is just playing. Not only when we are manipulating the slider value. To solve this, we can add an if statement for our written code. So only when manipulation slider is true, our playback position gets updated. I've created this manipulation slider field and set its value to false in the main page constructor. Now we have to add two events to our slider. Manipulation starting, that notices when a user starts changing the slider value, and manipulation completed, when the user is ready with changing this value. Let's add our event handlers, use the right parameters, and set the manipulation slider value to true when the manipulation string is starting. When manipulation is completed, we set this value back to false. This is much better now. Our media player playback position only gets updated when our user is manipulating the slider bar. At last, we want to display the time progression of our media file on this left text box and the max duration of our media file on this right text box. So when pressing the play button after uploading a media file, we want to display the maximum duration that is saved in this time span field. If duration mf.seconds is greater than 9, like for example this, we create this string for our text box. If not, like this, we have to add this extra zero after the colon. To show our users the time progression of our media file on this left text box, we have to update this text box each time the value of the slider bar changes. So in our slider value changed event handler, we can update our progression text box text value with the help of the playback position of our media player. This playback position is also stored as a time span object, so it's almost the same code as with max duration. This code is just running each time the value of the slider bar is changing, also when it gets manipulated by the user. After testing the application, I still had to make some adjustments to the code. First of all, to be able to manipulate the slider, you have to set manipulation mode to all on the XAML page. Also, our load button misses some important codes, like setting the max duration text box, progression text box, and slider value to zero, and pausing the media player. The play button misses the slider.value equals zero statement. When the video was on its end, this error came up, because the e.new value is not a round number, so it can be converted to an integer. To change that, I've used the math.round function to convert the final e.new value to the nearest integer value. So, after these adjustments, our c -sharp UEP Media Player application works just fine. I hope you enjoyed this video, and in the next one, we will use the Media Timeline Controller clause to create three media players that run perfectly in sync. I hope to see you there.